Hey folks, really great to be here. Yeah, nice to see everyone. Thanks for the sweet intro, Ben. All right, thanks so much. So I'm going to kick us off and, you know, take us way back to about a year and a half ago when we started thinking about the concept of the adventure. So I'm going to talk a bit about, you know, what prompted the creation of the adventure and how this was started. So way back when I was doing some research into ambassador programs and I found out that the majority of programs were pretty repetitive and they essentially missed the mark on capturing kind of the unique interests and talents of all of those participants. And then generally for my personal life, I'm really big in planning activities for my friends and family. I love to design game nights and other sort of interesting ways. Um, and so we kind of thought about, you know, how can we bring sort of the spirit of game night into the digital world? Other observations doing this research that I noticed was that the industry is made up with people that are very digitally well-versed, so incredibly smart with new technology. They're kind of like the early adopters. They love to collaborate. Um, and then people just love to trying out new tools and they really enjoy learning from one another. So similar to myself and kind of what brought me into the space, I like learning from other people as well. Uh, one kind of interesting thing that we had noticed in this experience when we were figuring out, you know, how do we actually execute a concept of the adventure? So we met with game designers, like people that actually have their PhD in game design. And we asked, you know, what constitutes a great game? Some of the things that we learned that we tried to bring to the very first adventure and other adventures was that games are essentially really hard to make fun. Um, but the best games are actually copies of other games. And, you know, playing games uh, asynchronously, games are played very well when they are concentrated through short bursts of activity. So, for instance, having a quest in a short period of time is really what's a lot of fun for people. Uh, and one of the reasons why we kind of have a quest that spans, you know, many days is to really accommodate for the time zones because Web3 is like a global community. The other thing when you're designing, yep. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, and the other piece is when you have the attention of such a large audience, you have to really be intentional and honor the time of participants. Um, and what really kind of drove this creation was our love on the whole team from Harry Potter designing scavenger hunts and, you know, reading a lot of fiction books or participating in game rooms. So like escape room activities. And, you know, we really wanted to put all of those qualities into the creation of the adventure. So to come up with the very first one, we essentially had three goals. The first goal was to entertain. How do you provide a meaningful experience for people? Second goal was how do you create this like organized creativity and buzz of everyone doing stuff together? And then the third goal, which is very important to our values, it's around educating. How do you make people feel like they're learning from one another and fostering really good relationships? Um, you know, just a caveat, we're a tiny team and the concept of the adventure was really created when Clipper Dex was like less than three months old. So I'm going to pass it on to Drew to talk about what it took to actually design the quest the, and the quest system design concept.
Yeah. So um, Adventure One was a really interesting experiment into finding all of these types of quests that would be suited for the digital environment and how we could take these uh, kind of like pirate themed ciphers and codes and activities that um, we were getting inspired from, from books and movies. How do we bring that into a digital space? So um, the first quest was a book cipher that we tried to make digital. And a book cipher is like three letters. One identifies the page, one is the line on said page, and one is the letter on said line. And then with that series of three um, numbers, you would find a sentence or whatever. So we tried to make this digital um, by having people scavenge the documentation and then they would unlock a password to complete a quiz and then those who scored above 70% would get points. So the first lesson learned here was that book ciphers are really hard to do digital because uh, everyone has different window sizes. So we were trying to direct people to like find the right line and find the right letter on that line. but. With everybody's screens being different sizes, uh, everyone had different answers. So we wound up having to like post a screenshot of my screen, which was, you know, good learning lesson. Um, another lesson from this was like, we did this entire system on Discord and we had everyone select their ships on Discord and all of the games were happening there. That was the only place. So at the end of this quiz, we had hoped to like throw people overboard if they didn't complete it. Um, and so that meant removing the role from everyone on Discord. What we didn't account for was A, the amount of participation, which was rad to see so many people. But that meant we had to remove everyone's roles manually. And it wound up just being like five members of our team manually removing people cross-referencing between like this document and our discord roles it was like midnight on a friday and it was just a little bit of a nightmare but um oh my God. i don't even know i just remember i was camping in the woods and i had no service so i'm like tethering off my one bar on my phone to like get all these discord roles removed Oh, it was, yeah, never again. He said never again. Uh, I feel like it was like batting down the hatches or something. Um, I think it was something all aboard or all hands on deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny um yeah so we learned a lot of lessons from quest one on how to make this uh activities more digital and suited for the environment um quest two we had a series of amas with some other l2 projects and ships got to ask them questions and then those questions helped them create these really cool infographics on that l2 specifically so those graphics were posted to twitter for voting um and then the winning team was the one with the most votes. So that was actually a really successful quest. Um, it was great to like see everyone's creative work. I think that everyone had the right tools for it and it suited the environment. And it was also just really nice to give people this opportunity to like chat with some core team members from those L2s. Um, quest three was when we directed people to bridge tokens to Polygon and then make some swaps on Clipper. Um, we also tracked how many pirates completed those swaps based on this UTM link that was unique to each ship. And that was also super successful. It seemed like um, the link worked really well. That was one of the points where we were a little unsure about, like, how we would track which ships completed which swaps. Um, and this was, like, our first iteration of solving that problem. And it was, yeah, successful. It didn't capture the full picture because a lot of folks are using VPNs or are on Brave, so... Um, yeah, it wasn't the best solution, but it worked for like our limited capacity at the time. And quest four was when we launched the liquidity program on Polygon and we gave like this little phrase for people to unscramble. And the phrase was like Polygon pool open or something. And 
you had to go deposit and complete the quest. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the adventure, everyone was whitelisted. They all got tiered discounts for the Clipper swag store. Um, NFTs were awarded and captains got cash prizes. Um, ultimately, like this whole thing was mapped out on Figma, which is like a virtual whiteboard. It was like this multi-layer user experience chart with like all the different key actors in this from our team and like the captains and the pirates. And it showed how all of the actions and all of the moving parts were overlapping and like moving on to the next phase. It was like pretty thorough and a really exciting opportunity to practice like systems design at that level, like really getting at the hand of like the cause and effect of all of these actions. Um, yeah, it was a very cool experience to work out how to do all of this. Yeah, it's so Yeah, well said. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I was going to say one of uh, the way that we try to make decisions is data driven to really understand and how we can improve and better serve the needs of the people that use products. And so the very first survey that we did post the adventure, I'm just going to read some of the stats that we compiled that were really kind of impressive, um, given, you know, how small our team size was and the fact that we decided to create this like very big um, activity, this like digital world for, you know, so many different people that signed up. So for the very first adventure, we had around 4,100 people sign up that joined a ship to participate. And then through the different quests around, you know, 60% of those people made it through without being thrown overboard. And so the way that you were thrown overboard is if, I believe, if you weren't kind of an active participant, if you didn't really complete or pass the quiz that Drew had mentioned. And what was really cool about the adventure was that just the buzz that it created. So like it increased our Discord community so quickly in just three days, you know, it, it became a multiplier of how many people joined. Um, we collaborated with five different projects to bring visibility across the education and kind of the DeFi ecosystem. So the projects that we worked with were Synapse, Bridge, Optimism, Phantom, Avalanche, and Moonbeam. And then around like 400 people had filled out user feedback survey, and they gave us pretty comprehensive ideas for how we could improve what they liked, what they didn't. And part of us doing this like data research component is to make sure that as we evolve Clipper's community and product, that we account for all of these changes to make sure that each experience we learn from one, uh, one other, like kind of the way that we build, you know, going from Discord to product to the website. So some notable things, just to kind of read up some fun quotes. Uh, people had said, you know, I liked it very much. The tasks were super cool. The team was cool. Thanks. <laughs> and the very concept of a competition is always better than just the same task for everyone. So again, kind of what created the adventure was to try to be different than traditional like or modern ambassador programs. 
people seem to enjoy the quest, the challenges, specifically people enjoy the cipher, the book cipher quest. Uh, people said that they really liked getting to know members of the community. They felt that the environment was playful and it didn't feel forced. Um, and then the competition for constructive games. So people felt like it allowed them to engage with other communities because we had collaborated with other projects and we had asked people to do research on different platforms and actually, you know, talk to the different leaders from these other protocols. So that was wonderful for us in terms of knowing that we should have more partnerships, we should have more encouraging quests and opportunities where we segment people into different ships. People really liked being in teams and they like sort of competing with one another. Um, Drew, yeah, oh yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Ben. I was going to say, I'd love for Drew to walk through the evolution of adventures, basically kind of given what we learned from adventure one and each of these user feedbacks that we do from like adventure one, two, and three, kind of walk through the differences in design and product updates. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So there was quite a few product updates when it came to Adventure 2, um, and a lot of it was based off of um, our own ability as a team to manage the adventure. Um, so, like, when we talked about the challenges that we had with managing the entire thing on Discord, um, and we also had a lot of folks who talked about wanting to, um, like, be able to see their scores in different places and... So we actually built like a dedicated interface for people to sign up, select their ships, create their pirate names, and then track all the scores and like get their tasks on that interface. So that was a huge time saver because then we had this database of like people's wallets, um, which was a big thing for like if people accidentally put in the wrong wallet or they forgot their wallet um, or they wanted to change their wallet, we now had the ability to like go in and do that in an effective way that wasn't just like one person painstakingly changing data on um, like a Google Sheet. So that really helped manage things um, for us. And then also on the other side of like the management thing is we hired Ben, so our awesome community manager. And Ben handled the Adventure 2 implementation and like that kind of let Angie and I slip back into our roles at Clipper Decks. Um, so both of those things were like the core updates for Adventure 2 that made them so much easier to manage and also like allow us to accommodate that growth, what Ben just described as like that major jump in participation. Um, yeah, so that was the big thing for Adventure 2. Um, and then at Adventure 3, we started to kind of modify this UI. Um, we really wanted it to be a lot more attractive and we wanted people to be able to collect items. And that was something that we kind of like brainstormed for Adventure 2, but couldn't figure out um, how to do that in time. So we had been working on it since that point, um, a basically like a place where people could collect NFTs as their items in the game and then use them for special powers or point bonuses. Um, yeah, so that was a huge lift and, um, the dev team is so awesome. We all worked really hard on building this dashboard and inventory components. Um, yeah, it turned out absolutely amazing. And this was kind of our trial run with this. We are really eager to see how people enjoyed the inventory feature because, um, yeah, we have big plans for it. Like we anticipate scaling it up so that, um, there's actually like, functions for the NFTs that you can use during the game and have like real-time results or like 
have special items that give you certain powers as a unique pirate, like not just a point bonus to your ship. But um, yeah, our experiment with this Adventure 3 is really giving us a lot of lessons in how we manage like the transferring process and the collection of all of the folks who completed the quest and deserve the NFTs. Um, so yeah, interesting to hear what people think about the inventory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I um yeah, I feel like our whole team should be really proud of it. It's super cool. Um another thing that we did for Adventure 3 was uh limit participation because we want to make sure that like those who are participating, who are actively participating, um, are getting the best experience. And when there's too many people, it's sometimes hard to like be present and accommodating all for all of them. So Limited participation, and then we opened up an advanced registration period so that people who really wanted to secure their place on the ship and not be like uh, forced to go into like a time sensitive sign up period could do so in advance. Um, and then the last thing that we did for Adventure 3, which is on the back end, it's not something that anybody can really see or experience, but it is a major move for us to be able to, again, like manage these better so that we can provide better experiences. Um, our amazing dev team built this admin interface for Ben to manage all the pirate information and um, like transfer NFTs and award them to people. So before this, we actually like would have to hand off like a, a CSV list of addresses that deserved the NFT or that needed to like um, or which ship needed which points, like all of that was sent to our dev team and they had to do it all manually. And that was for Adventure 2. So this time uh, it's crazy because now Ben can just like be able to troubleshoot problems and assign points, change scores, um, send NFTs, everything himself through like a custom admin interface on the back end. So um, save this time for all of Yeah, it's so awesome. It's, uh, I feel like it gives you a lot of autonomy. Cool. Well, that's it for like the product development over the course of the past two adventures. Um, yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, as Drew was recalling the way that adventures have evolved, specifically getting us the admin panel, it just it gives me flashbacks of us creating Google Forms to get people to submit their wallets and then having Mark create pivot tables on Excel to compare like three different wallet lists and we oh accidentally got a filter wrong. <laughs> I don't know if Mark's on the call, but it's just uh, so many weekends were spent just figuring out how to get the right list of wallets. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Ben. So one of the things that I just want to kind of bring up is we really, really appreciate the time that people take to give us feedback after each adventure or even the time that they take to give us kind of inputs on Discord through our like new ideas channel. 
it's something that the team sees, like we hear you. It's certainly captured that information doesn't go to waste. And we allocate a lot of conversations and time, you know, weekly as part of our jobs to really understand and look back at some of this feedback and community suggestions and make business decisions based off of that. So I want to go through some of the critical feedback to acknowledge that we've received this and that we're thinking about how to make it better. A few points that have come up has been around timing between quests, so perhaps experimenting the duration of quests, uh, experimenting with the variety in quests. Uh, people seem to really like the puzzle, sort of escape room um, kind of ideas. And so I think we just need to spend more time figuring out what is possible in a digital world that we we can do given the capacity of our team. They gave comments around language barrier, um, the clarity of the writing, you know, deserving rewards, like how do we account our award system? And so having more effective scoring systems and being able to figure out and remove the non-active participants from ships. That's been feedback for us. Um, some other stuff has been around like technical issues experienced by participants when using the product. And so we really want to, you know, alleviate some of those as well for folks. And then how do we create a more collaborative environment so that people can learn from one another and can sort of form better relationships within their ships? And so we're certainly thinking about all of this feedback, you know, this has just been a sample of some of the stuff that I mentioned, and we have a lot more that we're working through to create sort of a roadmap of how we evolve Clippers community. Yeah, and to address some of that feedback and like kind of talk about our plans for the future, um, we are really hoping to amp up our games, challenges, and ciphers. So moving into the future adventures, like kind of going back to the roots and pulling out these like complicated challenges for people to really like sink their teeth into over a period of time. Um, definitely want to focus a lot on distinction between narrative and quest instruction to make sure everything's super clear for you guys. And um, more rewards that are aligned with the work done. And then another big thing that we want to try and push for, hopefully, Adventure 4, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but we really want to try and stop using OpenSea as our marketplace because it doesn't allow for our international community here to participate. So, yeah, we're looking into other options. Some of those options may be opening up a place for people to buy NFTs directly on Clipper. We shall see, again, all in development, but there are more things on the horizon that we're super excited about.
Yeah, great question. So I am a huge bookworm and I love fiction books and nonfiction books. Um, and then also in my personal life, I am like the, the community organizer for my friends and family. I design game board nights and I design my own games um, and competitions. And then I just with the one goal that everyone has fun, but that also that there's a winner. And so that is sort of where the love of how do we bring kind of the stuff that I do like in my modern world paired with we have other members on the team that are super into Harry Potter and um, other like escape rooms and scavenger hunts. And so, you know, I thought about, you know, what would that look like? Because I love these like really big strategic, intellectually hard problems of how do you organize people in a world that we really haven't done before. And so that was real, really kind of how the idea came up to be. I like had written a story for how this might work that was sort of similar to when you write a storybook with like a person going on a quest and then they pick up a piece of paper and then there's some actions. Um, and that's originally how it started, but then so many other members of our team actually built out what the quest would look like. Like Drew came up with the whole cipher design and other members of our team came up with ideas to, to collaborate with specific partners. And so that's sort of where the love of this concept came from was how do you bring, you know, this thing that I, I really enjoy, like designing activities for people and designing games experiences like, how do we do that for a community that appreciates this? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, ideally, they have a lot more functionality and some of that functionality might give you um, like special powers or special advantages as a pirate on a ship. Um, ben, you were actually working through what some of those explorations might be um, when you were preparing for Adventure 3. Uh, so I'd love to hear your opinion here um, from a product standpoint. I mean, there's like a lot of challenges that we've been kind of mulling over, like what, how will this work? Like how will this have a direct impact um, on to some functionality for the individual pirates? Um, so it's all, it's all in the works, but Ben, I'd love to hear what you've been planning on for functionality.
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how KYC would be relevant in decentralized finance. So um, especially not in the context of the adventure. And so I'm not sure, actually, I feel like that's almost like a, I need a crystal ball to be able to determine if, you know, there's going to be some sort of law that changes that mandates us and forces us to do this. Um, good question. By design, do you mean like the, uh, like the interface design? Or are you talking about like the branding of it or like the general like design of the quests and like? Right, okay, yeah, so that was heavily influenced by the storylines that Ben wrote, so Ben created all these backstories for each ship and was especially um, good at identifying, like, these key objects, um, and then I had a little bit of creative freedom there in choosing, like, the core colors, for some of it it was, like, pretty obvious, like, Blood Soul Bandit was red and Golden Galleon was yellow and Sapphire Sphinx was blue. Um, there was a little bit more um, decision making for like Fleet Elite and uh, Flying Dutchman, but everything kind of came naturally and we tried to keep the aesthetic within Clipper's brand as well. So staying with that like flat, two dimensional, a um, little bit desaturated colors and heavy black lines. So we wanted to make sure that everything was uniform because it was a part of Clipper. But it had its own, like, spirit and optimism in it, too. All right. Thank you so much, Ben. This has been great. Yeah, thanks for hosting and thanks everyone for listening in.